We all know that the 1911 is America's pistol, but it suffers from one clear problem, capacity. The double stack 1911, frequently referred to as a 2011, solves that problem. Yet the 2011 presents you with a new problem, much like if you got into cars or watches or whiskey, it's a wide ranging spectrum of prices and quality levels. So join me, my friends, and down the rabbit hole we go. Let's play a game. The game involves you realizing that polymer guns are for the birds. As you set out on your journey to become a man, you realize that 1911s are the best platform, but you're left wondering, where do I start? You see, 2011s are the sports cars of the gun world. And much like sports cars, they range from relatively conservative to absolutely bonkers. Where should you start? What's the best middle ground? And which one should you consider bucket list guns? Warning, this is gonna get expensive. Okay, everyone, uh, great episode today. Really excited to bring you guys this. Been uh, working on this video for a while. Quick thank you to Segara Gear. You got one of these bad boys on your waist? I got the belt. Yeah, hell yeah, right? Yep. So I got the light uh, the light inner belt. Same. Um, that's the one that I rock as an EDC belt. Yep. Um, all day shooting out here, I rock the emissary belt. Same. Um, you rock the battle wagon, that's yeah. more your style. Yeah. Which is a battle belt, if you couldn't figure out what a battle wagon is. Uh, but they make great belts. We've got a couple of videos we've done on them prior to the sponsorship. We'll link those below. Codes 1911 Syndicate saves you 10% off the belts there. Helps them, helps us, helps you. Uh, everyone wins on that. So <clears throat> let's get into this, okay? And the first thing I'm going to tell you guys heading into this video is this is going to be a little bit of a lengthy one because this started out as a very simple concept and very quickly turned into the opposite of that. <laughs> um, I intended for this to be like a 10 minute, like quick hit list. Here's what you get at these different price tiers. And uh, then me doing what I do, it didn't wind up going that way. Shocking. Okay. So what this video is, we made a video, it's maybe like top three or top five most viewed videos on our channel. It's called 1911's uh, Buyer's Guide, 1911 Buyer's Guide. Yep. And um, I recently watched that video because I'm like, why is that video so popular? And I hate that video. Uh, it's not good. Not a fan? It's not a good video. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is like the redemption round. This okay. is what that video should have been. Okay. Like a true deep dive into people understanding what you get for your money with this platform, okay? Not meant to be a gun review. It is meant to be more of a um, kind of a educational piece. But within this, uh, towards the uh, back half of the video, you may notice here there's a lot of different 2011 style pistols. I'll define that in a moment. But we will cover eight different guns in this video. Okay. So if you're like, hey, I just want to hear about the guns, cool. You're going to fast forward. We'll try to put some chapters down in the video description where you can find which gun you want to hear a little bit about. But we got a lot of stuff to cover before we get to this smorgasbord of firearms. Or here. be a homie and just watch the whole video. Yeah. Or be cool and learn some stuff. So First things first, let's define what a uh, 2011 is. Okay, <clears throat> just so everyone is clear, we are unloaded and safe, pointed in a safe direction. So for the sake of um, me making a point, swap your gun sure. to that. You so, this one? Uh, yeah, you can set it down. So okay. um, 
2011 basically is a double stack 1911, but the term 2011 is a patented term by Staccato, formerly known as STI. And what it is, is a the frame and the grip are separate things. The serialized part, part is the frame, but this just unscrews and you can put a different grip on it, yeah. right? So it's just a grip you can take off and put on a different grip. The serialized part is the frame, right? Yep, That's what a 2011 is. But again, Staccato is the only one who can use that term. So everything else you would refer to as a double stack 1911 or a high cap 1911, pretty much whatever. I will probably largely say 2011 because uh, I don't Ease really care and I'm just going to say what I want to say. But here's the deal. The price spectrum on 2011s is very vast. It goes from about $1,000 as an entry point up to about $10,000. Okay. And you go, holy shit, that's a big spread it's of prices. And we actually cover the vast majority of that spread here as we'll start getting into the guns. So when I think of 2011s, I break it into three different price brackets. The entry level price back bracket for me is gonna go up to $2,500. Okay. Okay. A mid-tier 2011 bracket for me is gonna go from about $3,500 to $4,500. Okay. Okay. And then for me, I label high end anything that's 5,000 and up. Okay. Okay. And I've told, uh, you know, uh, manufacturers and people this, I'm like, look, man, once you clear 5,000, you're in big boy territory. Sure. Which means, hey, your gun's got to be really, good really, go. really good, good to go at that yeah. point. Okay. So that's kind of how I break down the tiers. And one of the things that I want to just briefly mention is it's all relative. Okay. Because you might hear Hang on, you're telling me that's a $2,500 gun and you're calling that entry level? Sure. Are you kidding me? But it's all relative. The analogy I typically use is I take a Porsche Boxer, right? And people yeah. go, man, that's that's a really high-end car. It is. But it's the entry level to Porsches. It's an entry level sports car. Sure. It's like it kind of was, yeah, it's German engineering. It's a sports car. It's a freaking Porsche, man. It's an entry level sports car. Okay. Okay. Like compared to a, you know, Ferrari, Bugatti, whatever it is, you go, well, yeah, boxers like very, very simple. And much is the same for the Staccatos and the Bull Armories and the couple of the guns that we will talk about. It's not to say they're bad guns, but to say it, this is a relative sliding scale here. Okay. And that's important to understand. Okay. So let's start breaking down really what you get in these different price categories. And step one, right? The thing with that without this, nothing else matters is a reliable firearm. Sure. Right? So you go, hey, look, it don't matter what the price is. If this is, you know, our cheapest gun up here is about 1600 bucks today and it goes up to uh, like 7,500. Either in anything in between there, if it's not a reliable gun, then it doesn't matter anymore. What's but your definition of reliability? You know, hey, look, these are going to require more maintenance than a Glock. Sure. It's simply what it is because of tolerances and some of the things we're going to get into the weeds about. But um, I'd say, hey, look, a reliable firearm, if I can get through a good hard range day of 500 rounds, you know, like a class on uh, Friday when I'll be shooting at a couple of these, look, if I can get through that range day without needing to do any maintenance on the gun, I'm totally cool with that. Okay. I expect on these higher end guns after a range day like that, yeah, I'm going to probably clean the gun. Sure. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going to take it apart and, you know, basic field strip and clean it down, throw some oil on it. We're going to be good to go. Yeah. That's sort of my standard on this stuff. But the question becomes this. So if a bull armory, which is out here somewhere, if a bull armory works and is a reliable firearm per the standard I, I just said, and this infinity meets that same standard. So why would I spend $5,000 more for this when functionally... They're both reliable firearms. I think a lot of people have that question. They do. I'm gonna start by drawing an analogy to watches, okay? This okay. is where we're gonna begin because I think it might be a little bit easy to um, for people to understand, or at the very least, we enjoy talking about Most it. Most gun guys are watch guys too. Yeah, they, they kind of bleed over their sure. cars, watches, guns, all, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So take two mechanical watches, right? AKA, not a battery powered watch. Not An a, automatic self-winding watch. Yeah, right? Okay. So one's a thousand dollars, one's ten thousand dollars. Okay. Like whatever you got a, a Seiko and a, a whatever Ro Rolex uh, Submariner or whatever. Panerai. Right? Yeah, sure. And um, so you go, okay, you got one that's a thousand, one's at, one that's ten thousand. Mechanically, they have the same concept, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a mechanical watch, automatic, it, it perpetual motion. That's what keeps it going. So what's the difference? Why would I spend more on one than the other? craftsmanship for one meaning mm -hmm. a dude probably hand fits all the parts making sure they're good to go mm -hmm. 
Um, jewels, which are basically that's what they use is bearings inside of automatic watches. Mm -hmm. Jewels are going to be different, higher grade and more jewels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then some are going to be production and some are going to be kind of hand fit, custom fit, self-winding watches. Sure. So exactly right on all that. Okay. So here's how I, I'm going to kind of break it into a few different categories that then we'll draw comparisons with guns. So here's the first thing that separates those two watches. Uh, even though they run on a similar style movement. Um, materials and quality of components. Okay. Okay. The actual raw materials and what is happening with the actual shit that is that is on your sure. wrist. Right. I missed that. Yeah. 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 But that's a key one, right? Sure. And oh, we're gonna key, we're gonna key, see that yeah. play in here, right? Yeah. Good um, point. Complications. You go. Yeah. They, they. You know. Sure. Yeah. Yours tells time. Yours tell time. They're they're both you know automatic movements. But hey, th this one's got a date. Uh, this one's got a chrono. This one has a uh, helium escape valve. Uh, you know, uh, electromagnetic uh, field, uh, you know, prevention Fair day cage, thing. Right? You know, it's like, well, these are, these are called complications. Those complications add value, right? Because it increases how much it's got to go into making this what thing. What would be the the thing of complications for a 2011? It's going to get a little... Tolerances? That one's, fitments apart? Think about this. Iron sights? Red dot cut. Perfect. That's complication. Perfect. Right? That is more, you know, m machining that went into I was that. asking more for them yeah. to like. What's a complication? Uh, no ambi safety, ambidextrous safety that is fit for me as a lefty. Perfect. It's complication, right? Right side mag release, left side mag release. All that kind okay. of stuff. Next category, precision and accuracy, right? Of those two watches. Hey, one might be more precise than another based on the movement, right? And everything else that's associated with one it. One should be. Should if be. it's not, you got your money taken. Right. So. And the next one I'm going to lump into the category called refinement, okay. right? Which is just fit, finish, attention to detail, that okay. kind of stuff like what you're talking yeah. about, right? You're dealing with high level craftsmanship. Uh, if we come back to guns, right? You're dealing with a high level of craftsmanship when it comes to 1911s, whether that's single stack or double stack in this particular case. Um, and that equates to both machine and human time. Okay. okay. Because the lower end stuff here, the higher end stuff here, it's like, look, I can tell you the machine time that goes into the higher end stuff is significantly more, right? Because of some of the componentry and machining processes we'll wind up talking about. So <clears throat> it's human and machine time, right? And the thing that I would kind of tell you as we start really diving into the weeds is, you ever heard that expression? It, it's, it's chess, not checkers. Yeah. Okay. This is chess, not checkers. Okay. Okay. Glocks are checkers on a good day. Okay. <laughs> like, sorry, Glock fans. Like, you know, I've got no issue with Glocks. Like, they're great for what they are, but it's like, this is chestnut checkers. Sure. Okay. Like, sure. if you're like, man, I, you know, I stippled my Glock, I could probably build a 1911. You're like, uh, bro, <laughs> sir, sir, please, please. But a little more to it. Than please, that. my friend. Okay. So, if the question is, what do you get for your money at these different price tiers? I have some bad news, which is there is no universal answer. <laughs> and this is what I set out to do is to get, Here's what you get in the different categories. Okay. And there is no universal answer because different manufacturers have different processes and it's all kind of dependent, okay. which made this video instead of like 20 minutes, like an hour. That said, let's start getting into it. First thing, quality of components. Okay. I did calls with multiple, just so you guys understand, multiple manufacturers um, from this space and in a spectrum of different price points. And it was really fascinating because I posed to the same question, all these manufacturers, Tell me in your perspective, what do you get in these different price brackets? Like okay. where is the value gained? And one call very much centered around quality of components. Okay. And it was fascinating because I'd never been down this before. So let me give you the tier in terms of quality of components. Okay. okay? The worst would be MIM components. Uh, MIM, that's the... Metal injection molding. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So metal injection molding. This video is not going to break down for you what a MIM part is. Um, you can go look it up. It's actually very simple, but you know, again, go look it up somewhere else. That would be the lowest quality that a component could be, right? Okay. Would be MIM. Next would be cast, okay? Cast, if we just want to put it into a simple term from my childhood that would make sense to me is like, think Robin Hood. I'm going to make an arrow. I heat up metal to the point that it becomes liquid. I pour it into a dish that's shaped like an arrow and that hardens into now an arrowhead. Okay. Right. That is a cast part, right? It is liquid metal that now gets poured into the shape of the thing that you need it to be. Okay. okay. That would be the next lowest or the second sort of tier that we've got. Okay. Here. The next one up from that would be forged. Forged is the trickiest one because it is kind of a buzzy term that I think can is, can be a little bit mis understood sometimes, but from uh, as I was educated on this, forged is kind of this hybrid between 
uh, cast and billet, which would be the top tier. Okay. okay. Um, because at the end of the day, hey, forged is, we're not at the point of liquid metal, but we have heated up metal. Think about forging knives, right? You've been around this. Yes. Me and Nate and everything, and right? What are you doing? You're heating up metal to the point that it's soft and it's pliable. Pliable. Yep. Right? Now that weakens the metal, therefore you can move it, right? So now there's heat treating and there's all this stuff that has to happen. Okay. It is not fully machine. It's kind of this hybrid, you know? It's, it's, it's kind of in the middle sure. of these categories. The top tier would be billet, AKA whatever. We start with whatever, like this, uh, you know, this is a piece of metal, right? And this now goes into a machine and this gets whittled into a frame or a slide or whatever it is. Billet is that, that like, that's the Mecca, right? Some, some metallurgist um, will probably come in and be like, you fool, you don't know about this fucking NASA shit. And like, yeah, you're probably right, but I'm giving you my understanding of it. Billet, the most high end, MIM, the shittiest. Okay. Okay. But why does it matter? Well, I mean, back to the watch thing, if you want a high quality precision fit piece of equipment, you're gonna need high quality precision precision fit parts. So that's part of it, okay? But it's not the first point that I would make, which okay. is, I'm gonna blow your mind with how smart this statement is, even though it was <laughs> given to me and I didn't make it up on, on my own. It has to do with the rigidity of the metal, okay? Okay, why would the rigidity of the metal matter? what's called durability and longevity of your parts and components, yeah. right? So if this is, you know, this thing is billet and this thing is mem or, or cast, cool. One of these is a 75,000 round count gun. One of these is a 20,000 round count gun. Okay. You know, it's like, well, that matters. It's longevity yeah. of your gear. Sure. Which one's going to survive? Which one you're going to pass down to your kids? And which one's like, hey, you're going to get through the next three years with this and have a great time with it and just understand you're probably going to retire it after that. Yeah. Right. So that's part of where the difference is there with better components. Tolerances increase as tolerances increase. So does price. Why? Because now we are talking about increased machine and human time. Yeah. Right. So this shit gets complicated. Sure. When I say like chestnut checkers, like for real, I mean, I mean like this is the chess match of the firearms world. This in probably precision, like bolt guns and stuff like that. Those are the chess matches. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're not playing checkers here. The next category, going back to watch world, um, refinement. Okay. Okay. That is going to be the other thing that distinguishes these different price points. Here's how I would describe refinement to you. The finish work. We're clear. Let's think about the grips here. Okay. Was that grip fit for that frame or was that a drop in part? Now drop in parts. So they make like, you know, a hundred of all the components and then just put them together. Right. Right. So what was that one? That one is every single piece is custom fit for that specific gun in that specific way. No ifs, ands, or buts. Right. Cool. So think about it like this. Will this grip go with this gun or was this grip made to go with this gun? Because there's a difference there. Correct. No, this grip you could throw on any other staccato pin is going to work. It's going to work, right? Because it fits the dimensions. Right. In the same way, a drop-in Glock barrel. Sure. Or AR trigger, whatever it is. Sure. You know, no, no, that thing's meant to go with that category In these of, tolerances. of things. Okay. Versus a lot of what you have up here, these are not drop-in components, right? In in many cases, what you're dealing with when it comes to high-end 1911s is oversized parts. We'll get into that when we get into high-end category. Okay? But let me give you an example. Uh, the Infinity, for example. Okay. When we were down there shooting the match, uh, they had a gun that uh, they had made, which is what Chris was going to run in the match. Yep. And uh, the grip they had on that was just not my personal taste. Sure. And, and and so I remember asking Brandon Strayer, I was like, hey, you know, question, how much work would it be to swap out that grip to another grip? And I, I thought the answer was going to be, oh, no, probably, yeah, we do that. No, no worries. And he said, I'd rather build you a new gun. Yeah. 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 He goes, tremendous amount of work. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit. I was, it was like almost offended. Yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, shit. I didn't know that. I didn't mean yeah, it like that. Didn't know. And it's like, no, no, no. Because everything here is hand fit and blended and everything where you're like, no, no, no. This thing is meant to go with this thing. There's yeah. no cross compatibility here. So if they, if we were to switch out the grip, they'd have to refit the screws, the safety, the pinned grip safety, the mag catch. I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and here's the deal, right? And we'll talk a little bit about blending as we go. But um, most people, myself included, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not going to truly notice the degree of refinement and differences that the really smart people are going to notice. Sure. Because it's just like, man, I, I, I know what my eye's telling me, but there's stuff that some really smart 2011 builder is going to see where you're like, okay, cool. Let me show you what I'm talking about when I talk about this thing. Sure. As it relates to the refinement and the tolerances. 
So that said, let's dive specifically into entry level, mid tier and high end guns. Okay, so let's talk about entry level. So okay. again, entry level in my mind, up to $2,500. And I get it, it's an expensive pistol, but it's an entry level 2011. Here's what you need to expect with entry level. It's a production gun. It's not a, a, a high end custom fit and finish. You know, you're picking a bunch of options. It's not that, it's a production gun. Okay. okay. And you will, in these uh, entry level 2011s, you are gonna get some MIM parts. Okay, like you need to be aware of that. Like some of the guns up here, and I'm not really gonna go too far into that because it's I don't I don't, I don't, we don't you know to. really go into that. But it's like yeah, some of the guns up here, yeah, there's gonna be MIM parts involved. Okay, you just gotta understand that because again, these are production guns. They are gonna have looser tolerances, and they are gonna have little in the way of hand fitting, and more so in the way of drop in components. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's more so drop in stuff. Uh, I would also expect for you to get a polymer grip. Um, like so if you look grip. at like, uh, yeah, staccato and the bowl would be like two leading contenders. Hey, they're polymer grips versus a metal grip as you move up the price brackets. I also would expect pretty little in the way of optional upgrades um, in terms of like, hey, you're not changing your serrations and all that kind of stuff. Like, no, no, no. That's for like the, the higher end stuff. It's so production gun. Yeah. You, you might, you know, be able to pick like a red dot cut. You might be able to pick, do I want an ambi safety or, you know, Th those are a couple of them, but like you're not going to be picking much stuff. Staccato has that, like you can, yeah, a you couple know, things. Yeah, you know, and I think you can like DLC the barrel. Sure. Um, do Nothing a threaded wild. barrel. You know, core fundamental optional upgrades. That's it though. Okay. Mid tier, thirty five hundred to forty five hundred. You will be getting higher quality components here. Okay. At that price point, and I can't say that this is universally true, but I'm telling you what I would expect to be the case, um, and it would largely be the case, which is no mem or cast parts i do want fully machined parts whether that be billet or uh forged i do want machined parts once i'm starting to pay upwards of four thousand dollars for okay. a firearm right mem forged anchor or cast ain't got no place um you will largely get a hand fit gun the couple guns we will wind up talking about will be the alchemy quantico high cap and the fowler Vanta 9. Those will wind up being our two mid-tier guns that we, we talk about. And I can tell you with both of those, they are uh, the overwhelming majority of the gun, if not the whole gun, is all hand fit and everything. There's really no drop-in parts that are happening in there. The gun is deburred. What do I mean by deburred? Means any of the sharp edges are taken off. Yeah. Right? Like some of the entry-level ones are going to have some sharp edges up front. Some, mm -hmm. And you can see it just by the way the gun wears. Yeah, the sharp points are going to wear first. Sure, right? Um, yeah, it's like think, hey, ninety degree angles. Uh, we are now rounding those off and making sure you're not catching any like hard edges like that. That sounds really ridiculous, but again, we're playing in big boy stuff here. You know, like deburring on a Glock's like, sorry, what? Like, what are you even talking about? But yeah. like on this, yeah, it starts to matter as we start spending more money on this stuff. You'll get a gun with tighter tolerance. Uh, I would think of that mid-tier is kind of a hybrid, almost semi-custom category. Okay. What I mean is, hey, look, you're not designing the gun. Yeah. You're not designing the gun. You'll probably have a few more options that you can pick, but think of it as more of a production gun, but with custom style fitment and attention to detail. Okay. So it's like, sure, this is the gun. You're buying this gun. Here's a couple options, but the attention that we're putting into it more so resembles a high-end gun than it does a budget gun. Okay, that's okay. what you're getting at the MIDI, Track. full MIDI tier there. Most of those will have a metal grip module at that point. Like if we look at the Fowler, you will now get a metal, typically aluminum uh, grip module. We'll talk about the Alchemy and kind of why it doesn't have that. But um, I would expect to get a, a metal grip module, better trigger, uh, which, hey, is the place where the 1911 platform shines is, is, is in the trigger. I mean, they're, they're amazing. Uh, you will get a better trigger in that price point. I do expect the gun that's, hey, roughly $4,000 to either come with a dot, but, or, or not with the dot, cut but like for a dot. cut for a dot, okay. or at the very least, that option from the manufacturer. Okay. AKA, it's not like I got to go buy this gun and then I got to send it off to Vulcan Machine Works or whatever sure. to get a cut for a dot. It's like, no, 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 you cut it for a dot. You're the one making the gun and yeah. you charge me four grand for it. Last thing, again, don't expect a, a ton in the way of... Um, options and upgrades hey still kind of a base level of options and upgrades just a better fitment and refinement for those upgrades okay high end five thousand plus a lot of money you know 
A lot of money. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah. You, you know, five thousand dollars. Spend is, on one gun. Is a chunk of cash. Yeah. Has decided to put his face completely in dirt for some 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 reason. That was a good idea. Um, all machine parts. Again, uh, men uh, and cast parts like absolutely cannot be in a five thousand dollar plus gun. So I do expect uh, billet or forged components. I do want the gun to be all hand fit. Like at that level, hey, this needs to be a completely hand fit gun. From the slide to the frame to the, you know, safeties yep. and the grip safeties and, you know, slide releases, all that kind of stuff. It needs to be a hand fit gun. You think refinement to the max. That's what you're getting along with very tight tolerances. These bugs are eating us up. Even you see him, him getting hit with it. At that price point, because of the t very tight tolerances, you might have a break-in period. Sure. And that's something that can be very frustrating for people. But if you understand this, like for example, recently I got this Nighthawk in. I expect that gun to have a break-in period. Okay. Hasn't needed one, but I expect it to because it's just it's what it is. No different than like a high-end car where it's like, hey, for the first 200 miles, don't go above this. Yeah. You know, my buddy had one built and it was like, hey, mm -hmm. first couple hundred under this. You know, next couple hundred under this, yada, yada, yada. Yep. It's the same thing. It's a precision machine. Precision machine. And they require time to break in and sort of everything just kind of meld together and find its home. Sure. Um, you also, in that category of guns, not that this should be why you buy one, but you are getting into an exclusivity category. Yeah. Okay. Good time. And that is something that for some people they care about. For some people, they simply like nice things things you, you know but it's like hey, you are getting into the kind of you know uh, the flex sure territory at that point you should expect bigger lead times because you're dealing with um, very high-end guns many of which will be sort of custom firearms at that point so expect longer lead times what's a longer lead time i don't know let's just call it a year i'm, I'm ballparking it for everyone's guns over five thousand dollars call it a year a year okay you know, I, I mean it's a total hit and miss you know but yeah roughly I expect a lot more in the way of options and customization. Yeah. So, and in some cases, potentially a full custom firearm where you're picking everything, or at the very least, a lot in the way of customization. I want a perfect trigger. I mean, your trigger has to be flawless at that price point. And generally speaking, I do expect your gun to have the softest and best recoil impulse. Sure. Return to zero the best. That is something that I'm expecting once I'm spending that kind of money on a firearm. Doesn't seem like a lot to ask for. It is not. For that amount of money. Okay, before we break down eight freaking firearms here on this juicy episode today, if you guys are looking for any ways to support the channel, buy a freaking house. How about that? And if you're confused, what the hell does that mean? The 1911 Syndicate is actually a real estate company, uh, residential real estate primarily. We don't really do um, farmland, uh, as some of you like to hit us up about. But hey, let us know if you need real estate help. We work all over the country, Arizona, Utah, freaking Florida, Texas, Vegas. I mean, you name it, we pretty much work wherever. And then Patreon, also a great way you contribute. Kick us a couple bucks, keeps the lights on or the cameras on around here. Puts the ammo bill. We get you some behind the scenes content sure. and giveaways and private classes. Ooh, we got a good juicy class coming. And tomorrow everyone flies into Utah for the first Patreon only class that we're doing. Two day red dot pistol class. It's gonna be exciting. And we're not instructing Mike Pannon is. We're flying in legit instructors. So it's gonna be great. Just to count whiskey out. tastings, all kinds of stuff lined up. Separate from the class. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. All right, let's break down these guns. Let's start with Alpha Foxtrot. Okay. This guy right here. That guy right there. Finn, you are looking mighty pathetic at this particular moment. Here's the deal. Heading into this, this is going to be a brief overview of these eight different guns. These are not reviews. Some of these guns, let's see, at least one, two, three, yeah, maybe three of these. We've got full reviews on the others. Yeah. We've talked about, kind of done reviews on. So just tune back in. Some of these are in the review process now. So, and we're going to work our way from cheapest to most expensive. First up would be Alpha Foxtrot. This is the uh, S15 model from them. Yep. And... This came in recently for review. It was a company we met at SHOT Show. I thought it was kind of interesting. This is 1600 bucks. This does not qualify as a 2011. I'm actually still kind of learning about it because it really is kind of its own thing. What's unique about this that definitely doesn't make it a 2011 is it runs on Shield Arms Max. Yeah. Okay. The double stack ones. Yeah, the double stack, yeah. basically like the Glock 48, Glock 43X mags that yeah. came out. And that is a trend that you're seeing more and more in this space of people coming out with guns. There's also the um, Oracle Arms. Yeah. They're working on the SIG 320 mag. Yep. Kind of, sort of, 2011 thing. You know, uh -huh. they, these, there's kind of these hybrid guns that are coming out, which is interesting. As long as they work, it's it's interesting. It's a straight production gun. Like, look, this isn't a, um, a you know, a, meant to be a super hand fit gun or anything. They're not pretending that it is. It's meant to be kind of a unique spin on a carry 1911 with capacity that stills following the 1911 platform. Sure. So we will have a review coming on that probably like late this summer. So you guys can tune in for that. 
Up next, Bull Armory. This we have done a full review on, so you guys are welcome to go find that. Price on this bad boy, $1,760. So, very reasonable price. It comes exactly as you see there, minus the optic, okay? So there's nothing that has been upgraded or changed on that gun, minus throwing an optic on it. So, it comes with excellent features for the money, in my mind. Uh, there's plenty of people who have said, hey, look, I think that's a great place to get started, especially if you're on a budget and you're looking to kind of test the, the double stack 1911 waters, but you don't want to spend a lot of money yet, but you sure. want a gun that's well outfitted. I think it's a great place to start. Okay. It's always been very reliable. Um, I, I, I truly had no issues on that. Guys um, that have bought these from our recommendation or yours specifically have been very happy with them. Yeah, it, it's solid. Um, it, it is a production gun, okay, so it's going to lack some of the refinement. Mine, the, the prime example I could point out on the refinement scale of this is my thumb safety was was kind of a bitch. So it came and it was uh, too loose, and now it's too tight. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, so, you know, it came and it was loose to the point where, I, like, under recoil, my, my, you know, just the meat of my hand was nudging it up. So I sent it back and they kind of refitted it. It was still a little loose. And I was like, hey, we got to tighten that thing up a little bit. And now it's a little tighter than I would actually prefer. But, you know, again, you're not getting like high end refinement on these. It's a production gun. Okay. Sure. But a good production gun. The biggest con of the Bull Armory mags, for those of you that might consider it, it doesn't run on the standard pattern staccato mags. It runs on, you know, you can just get the magazines from Bull Armory. MBX, who makes very expensive magazines, will make one that's compatible with the Bull Armory guns. So, hey, if you want to go get some $130 you know, MBX mags, that's your option, or run the Bull Armory mags. And I think maybe someone else is working on them, but I can't remember who it was. One, I guess we could say con, even though it's not like you can fault them, but hey, uh, Bull Armory is based in Israel. Yeah. So they're an Israeli company, which is just going to mean they have a little less domestic support. Sure. Okay. Because they're a company that's based overseas. Sure. So again, can't fault them for that. They're from where they're from. But I'm just saying, hey, from a, you know, sort of aftermarket perspective and be aware you know, customer and support and everything is like, hey, they're just, they're, you know, they're not based in the U.S., but they have obviously U.S., you know, based, based folks. <laughs> Next, Takato P. Yeah. So in this mind, in my mind, this be kind of that, you know, thousand pound gorilla in the room where you're like, yeah, that's the, that's the name that's going to take up a lot of space Yeah. in the industry. And I don't mean that in a bad way at all. Just mean it is, it's the heavy hitter. Yep. Um, you know, I don't know how many guns Staccato produces a year. Um but it's a lot. A lot. It's a lot. And they're carried um, pretty commonly inside of law enforcement departments and stuff. They are definitely the company from this world that has gotten mainstream acceptability. Yeah. In terms of like, um, I know Border Patrol, I, believe, I think it's Border Patrol that carries uh, carries them now. Really? Yeah, I believe so. Huh. Um, I know it's 260 different agencies. Yeah, I believe Border Patrol's on there. I mean, a ton, obviously 260 agencies, a ton of different law enforcement organizations. Marshals use them. Yeah, uh, Marshalls. Yeah, I, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So the price, this is the Staccato P. And the price with, not with the dot, but cut for the dot is going to run you 2500 bucks. Yep. Okay, so it's right at that top end of the entry-level price point. The P would be like the flagship Staccato model, right? There's the C2, which is more of a carry. There's the CS, which is the new carry one, which I wish we could do a review on. Um the P, and then there's like the XC, which is more of a competition rig. The P is the, that's the main one. Yeah, it's the one that almost everyone has. And that's what you had, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And you loved yours from what loved I remember. It. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. yeah. So they're great guns. Um, it, It's interesting too, a uh, 4.4 inch barrel, which is, I, like, I think that was a really smart move on Staccato's part because they basically said, hey, the tr two traditional links are four and a quarter inch or five inch, which would be commander and, and government links. The 4.4, I, I think, is kind of a smart move because it's this hybrid kind of do-it-all length. Like, you could carry that, you know, at least if you're a decent-sized dude. Um, great range gun, bedside. Jimmy carried this. Yeah, and he's not huge, no. um, you, you know. Um, he he's makes got a, you look He's huge. got a big heart. Um, he's just not big. Correct. Um, you know, but the P, it really does check a lot of boxes. Uh it is a production gun. Okay, so again, expect a lower level in the way of hand fitment and all that kind of stuff if Staccato ever sees this. No offense, guys. That's no shade at all. I'm saying you're, you make a truth. very, very good gun for what it is. But it's a production gun, right? It's not all meant to be hand blended and refined and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a few optional upgrades with threaded barrels, and I think you can DLC your barrel, mm -hmm. off the cut, you know, a few different things like that. Yep. Uh, beyond that, you'll need to send your gun out. 
for additional mods. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Good customer service from my uh, understanding. Not that I've ever really, you know, had to test that theory out, but to my understanding, good customer service. Just heard it's good. Wide aftermarket support, right? A ton of people make holsters that are compatible with it and, and all kinds of stuff. Staccato would be, for many of you, if you're getting into this space, the place to start. Yeah, the your I would agree 100%. That's your starting point. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's the it's the easiest one to say. That's probably where you guys should be yep. in your journey. Next up on the list, moving in the mid tier category, we've got the Alchemy. We got the Alchemy Quantico High Cap. Interesting gun. This is not my gun. Uh, this is a loaner from someone that owns the gun. Tight and uh, tight fit gun. So, and, and I, I don't have a lot of rounds on this, so I'm not going to talk. You know, this is certainly not a review. More of kind of like a first impression. Just kind of give you guys some tidbits. 38.95 is the base price on the gun as configured with the hard chrome, which would not be my personal preference, um, but would be about 4,500 bucks. Ditch the hard chrome, uh, and you're probably back down to like I don't know, 4,100 or something as, as configured. So, we're just going to ballpark it. It's right around that $4,000 price point. What do you get for your money on that? Well, the Alchemy is in an interesting category because 2011s I think of as like modern supercars. Sure. Okay. And oftentimes their aesthetics, like if we take the Atlas, for example, their aesthetics uh, represent modern performance. Alchemy is a different thing. Alchemy is for the guy that wants, I want traditional, you know, he's for that guy. Guy who's like, hey, I want capacity. But don't make me modern supercar looking thing. I want a classic thing with with more bolts. That's yep. what I want. Um, to that effect, typically in this price point, I would like to see a metal grip module. A metal grip module would not have been the right move for this gun. It you would have defeated so? the whole purpose. Okay. It would have defeated the whole purpose. For in, in my mind, it's like, nah, that's a retro, that's a throwback, that's what alchemy is about, all hand fit and everything. You go, I give them a pass, <clears throat> even though i like a metal grip at that price point. I give them a pass because they've carved out this niche okay. category of retro 2011. So it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I give you a pass on it. But um, it does come with a bushing barrel versus a bull barrel. The vast majority oh, of yeah. these would be uh, bull, bull barrels because barrels, yeah. that's just kind of more so what 2011s are. Uh, all hand fit beveled uh, edges, so there's no hard edges anywhere on the gun. You'll see a lot of blending of safeties and grip safeties and all kinds of stuff. Again, what does all that equate to? Refinement. Refinement you know, and fit. It's yeah. refinement and it's old school techniques to make a tight gun. And shoots, I, I will say, actually remarkably She's soft. Nice. Yeah. For a gun that isn't on a, a metal grip module, doesn't have a light on it or anything, it actually shoots um, very, very soft given that it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. You know, on, on what it is. So pleasantly surprised. Actually very much enjoyed it. Agreed. Up next, Fowler Vanta 9. This is a personal gun. I'll, I'll highlight the, a couple of these have been personal guns of mine, but uh, the Fowler being one of those. So this is a personal gun. Whew, that's tight. This is a very early uh, gun that Fowler made. It actually just came back from getting some work done and just kind of like getting up to speed with all the current stuff that they're that they're doing. Um, but I very much love this gun. It's well documented. Price on them, $4,500, uh, which I think is a very fair price for what you're getting. A lot of attention to detail and hand fitting on this. So I've talked at length uh, with the uh, folks over at Fowler and... There's a lot of attention to detail that, that goes into these things. Like, they, they put a, a lot into these. Again, think production gun, but with custom level of um, attention to detail, attention detail. And, and refinement. That's how I look at these. Very much in the category of modern supercar aesthetics. In terms of a gun where you go, yeah, now that one looks modern and like race car. Yeah, that one really does wind up in that category. Non-functional grip safety, which uh, I, I... Yeah, it's a pinned... Yeah, which really makes me happy. I've really come to kind of dislike functional grip safeties just because there is more of a margin for error. As long as the thumb safety is properly fit, I'm very comfortable not having a functional grip safety. I would huh. prefer it to actually. Again, as long as the thumb safety has been properly done and it's not coming off or on on its own or with too little pressure. Um, it does have, in my mind, a pretty perfect feature set. Aluminum grip module, which is very nice. I like the grip texture on that quite a bit. Comes red dot cut. They've got a few different plates that you can do, whether you want to do an acro or I've got a 507 on there. Grip safety, the little texturing where your thumbs would go. Yeah. Just a nice touch. 
It's not like a ledge that you can push down on. It's just a reference point. It's yep. just a like, cool, I know where I'm at as I'm as I'm building my grip. Excellent trigger. They actually, uh, when, when they were just doing some work on it, lightened the trigger up a little bit. So right now, our goal was to get it down to about two and a half. Right now, it's a smidge over that, but it will kind of work its way down uh, to about two and a half. The light trigger. Yeah, it's good. It's a really, really nice trigger. Um, anyway, you know, a lot of nice things I can say about those guns. Uh, I will also say this. It's the gun here that I have the most rounds on. Yeah. So, like, I got a lot of time. I got a lot of time on that gun. Extremely reliable, especially given that I have not, to be perfectly honest, maintained it as well as you should. You should. Um, okay. And that gun's been still very, very reliable. Okay, up next, we've got the high-end category, and we are going to start with Atlas Gunworks with the Hyperion little bit of there's gonna be kind of a little bit of mixed uh, emotions here and some of the stuff that i'm going to give you so the first thing you notice when you grab these is slide to frame is so butter i mean just so so butter i mean it's it's kind of mind-blowing and the triggers are fantastic so you you're you're immediately like oh hell yeah right yeah this definitely jumps up yeah and the grips are nice and, and all this kind of stuff right and they look awesome and everything with Atlas, what you're really getting is a very, very nice production gun. What I mean by that is there is not a lot in the way of options or anything that you pick on these. I mean, it's basic stuff. You can go to their site and see it. You're talking like, what color do you want your base pads to be? Do you want your slide to lock back on last round or not? Do you want, you know, a, a lefty or a righty safety? Like it's basic stuff that you're picking. You're really not picking anything beyond that, but you're paying a lot of money for it. So that one's $5,300. Now keep in mind, that's without a dot. So if you pick the comparative model that has a dot, now you're talking like 57, 5,800. So you're talking just shy of six grand, okay? A lot of money. I mean, like a lot of money now, right? And there's some things that you get and some things that I'm left kind of wanting for. Um, at that price point, irons only, I'm like, look, I, I get it. You've got your dot version of that, but it's like, man, it, it's real tough to wrap Should be head. standard. So it's tough to wrap my head around a dot that didn't at least come with, you know, cool. Does it come with irons? Great. But was it at least cut for a dot? Like, that's what I would at least like to see. That way I could run irons or a dot. Atlas makes a lot of guns for the competition world. So you will see them in some of the bougier, like USPSA guys. So 4.6 inch bull barrel on this. Again, kind of like the staccato. It's in that hybrid length. Yeah. I do like that about it. I'm actually really drawn to that length of gun. Like, it's really kind of awesome because it does a little bit of everything. Yeah. I really like that. It has these modular grip panels. It's one of the things that you get is you can see. It'll be tough to see on camera. Yeah, they won't be able to see it on the camera, but there's cutouts. Yeah, so if you're a righty or a lefty, and then based on the size of your hand, you can build up one side of the grip so that it, you know, fills in that meat on your hand. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't. I'm I'm married, but yeah, well, I think you understand. Yeah, I understand it very well. Um, so let's talk about, give a little bit of, I guess tough, tough love here because we've done a couple Atlas videos and um, the last one I believe was the Artemis and that one yeah. has kind of like a weight at the end of the barrel that makes it shoot a little bit flat. I've uh, shot and spent a little time on two Atlases since that video and here's how I'm going to word it. It's it's how I worded it uh, recently on, on Patreon actually, which is use a dating analogy. Okay. That's a like a girl that you read her profile and her bio or whatever if you had that kind of thing and you're like oh on paper we're like the best match ever like modern good looks and great trigger and so smooth and you're you know you put into dating terms and, and you're just like hang on so she's a 10 hot and she's a one crazy like that doesn't even seem like it exists you know and it's like and, and like hang on you're telling me that butt on her is real that's real like, she's born with that? You're like, oh, man, I'm impaired. And she's not crazy? She ain't got no kids? And she likes whiskey and shit? And you're like, fuck yeah, man. We are compatible. And then you go on your first date, and it's blatantly obvious you got no chemistry. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you got no chemistry. Damn, that's what it came down to? And that's kind of where I've been left lately with Atlas. The couple of guns that I've shot from them lately, I just go, man... You check all of my boxes on something that I want, but when I shoot it, I'm left wanting a lot more than I just got for my money, okay? okay? Strangely kind of harsh recoil impulse for a gun at this price point. That gun shouldn't be that snappy. Okay. It shouldn't, okay? Um, so that's the first thing where you're like, man, that's kind of a deal breaker for me, honestly, if I'm dropping almost $6,000 on a gun and I'm like, 
The recoil feels kind of like a staccato to me. Like that one's tough for me to wrap my head around. Okay. The other thing I really don't like the Atlas mags and it's taken me a long time to, to, to get comfortable saying this, but like I blew one apart yesterday. Like all the detents just blew out and the mag just disassembled them. Cause they're proprietary, right? They're not. They're staccato pattern mags. Oh, really? But it's okay. like the detents blew up. But the springs that they put in those things, their whole thing is like guaranteed lock back on your uh, on your mags, right? Okay. It doesn't need that we doesn't mean that we need to spring these things where it's like Andre the Giant has to load your mags if you want to get it to twenty rounds. Like, I mean, the springs are obnoxious. Yeah, none of my staccato mags wouldn't. They would always lock back on last round. Yeah, and the springs don't. And they're like, stock. No problem. You know, just fucking load them up, go, yeah. go go, to work. You know, it's like the, the, the mags I don't really care for, the recoil impulse I don't care for. And the other thing, we'll show you some footage. Um, I'm going to go this way. There's no one over there. But so I get it. This is a safety that is set up for a right-handed shooter, which means the paddle's a little bit bigger on this side of the gun because a right-handed shooter, that's what they would be using. But the following... You'll you'll see. We'll show you some B roll. But basically, if I put a little bit of pressure on the gun, right, I will wind up flipping up the safety. Of course, now it wants to be complicated about it, right? But with a high grip, right, when I just squeeze the gun, the safety will wind up going up. And you might go, "Well, yeah, idiot, it's made for a right-handed shooter, and you're a lefty." I would still. I have one, the same issue. So one, I still think a lefty should be able to pick up your gun and have it functionally work. I do think that's a reasonable request. It happened to you as yep. well. And happened to my buddy that I was shooting this last week. So I've had two right-handed shooters yeah. who are competent shooters, right? But because they got kind of big, meaty hands, like, they're activating the safety. Yeah, if I have, like, a good grip. Let's see, I just did it right there, not even trying. Yeah, it's because it, I can't. It's too loose. It's well, too loose. Look look where my grip is. Sure. If I try to slide my thumb, see? Yeah. Now, the counter argument would be here was you're supposed to ride the safety. Yeah. You go, well, I don't actually ride my safeties on 1911s. I actually don't. Um, I actually get my, my thumb out of the way um, to, to so I don't ride the slide and potentially cause a malfunction. You know, you go, hey, look, to each their own. But I do believe, hey, look, that is a problem that I believe I've had this problem on multiple atlases, and I think it is something that, that they should address yeah. in that price point. Um, that and the mag release is extended too far. For a lefty, it's a real hot spot. Um, yeah, your palm was hitting it. Yeah, it, it, it's actually this finger right here. It's this finger that winds up hitting it on your grip. So when I'm grabbing this, it's like it's hitting this meat of my middle finger right there. Okay. It's like it doesn't need to be that extended. Like it it, it doesn't. That's unusual. So, um, so you know, Atlas, I, I'm in a tough boat because it's like I, I've I've done a review and talked to those guys on the phone, and I I like them. There's no shade that's attempting to be thrown. It's here. just some observance. I keep stuff, wanting right? to buy one and I'm keep left going. I, I don't know that I could justify that price. Sure. You know, so I don't know that that's my two cents. Take that for what it is. Up next, two more Nighthawk BDS nine. I know. We have a full review that is being uh, worked on currently on this video. The review should be out in June. You'll get an in-depth look at this in the coming months, but this is just a very, very quick hit list on this $6,000 gun. All in, as configured, minus the dot and the light. Okay? Obviously, okay. it's not going to come with a dot and the light. Um, but it is an interesting gun. Nighthawk's whole thing is one gun, one gunsmith. A.K.A., hey, all the parts are oversized and they're all hand-fit by a gunsmith. And he typically stamps his name underneath your grips. So if we were to take the, that grip yeah, module his name off, his, I think it's his initials or name, one of those two, is, is underneath there. So Nighthawk, you know, when I say hand fitment, what that really means is parts for the the nice ones of these, they come oversized and they have to, where they, like the barrel, for example, is oversized. And then the gunsmith, it's the craftsmanship of it. He goes in and shapes and whittles down that barrel until it perfectly fits with that slide, right? Yeah. It'd be like when I was a framer, I had to cut the two by fours to fit. Yeah. And it was just as precise. Exactly. Because you know I'm, I'm a precision individual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> little stretches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's how they work. Uh, it's all hand fit and finished. They uh, they bevel all the ninety degree angles, yeah. so there's not going to be any hot spots on that gun. Um, it's all going to be blended. Lifetime warranty is attached to the serial number, right? So if I get that gun, I sell it to you. Cool. Warranty transferred to you. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. The warranty's on the gun. Like yeah. it's not even on the person. You know. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Cool. The warranty's on the gun. What's cool about Nighthawk and kind of their approach to this thing 
is Nighthawk makes single stack guns. Yes. But what they do is they offer a double stack upgrade to all their single stack guns. Mm -hmm. So if you see a model that you like and you're like, ah, man, that's the one, the president or whatever the thing is. And you're like, I just want it to be double stack. Cool. It's, uh, I think I wrote it down, six, I think it's 650. Um, yeah, it's like 650 bucks and you can basically add the double stack. And that's a flat fee for any model? Yeah. Oh, hey, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you know what you're getting every time. Yeah. Yeah. This is double stack only, and again, we'll talk way more about that gun in the particular um, review video. But if you're just looking at the price range of the Nighthawk, so the double stacks start, you know, the entry level Nighthawk double stack is going to be forty-one fifty, and they're going to go up to about six grand. So that's going to be kind of like at the top of the food chain from the the double stack perspective. And as the name Nighthawk Custom may imply. It's not custom from the perspective of you're not picking, you're not designing the gun, but uh, there's a lot of features that you can pick within the specific model. So if you're like, hey, I want to do this thing and I want to flute the barrel hood and all kinds of different stuff. I need an ambidextrous safety, which is what I needed on that. Um, all those Cocking serrations. Yeah. Um, serrations are going to be a little, it's more so going to be, do you want them or not? You're not yeah. really going to pick the style yeah. so much on a Nighthawk. Correct. But there's a lot of other stuff that you will pick. Uh, based on the, the particular Looking model. Gun. So a lot of customization. Uh, everything else on that particular gun, we're going to leave for the review because that's in the review process. We will cap it off on the Infinity here. Price-wise, uh, how much are they? Well, it's going to vary because the thing with Infinity is they are all custom guns. There is no production. There, There is not even a model from Infinity. I don't believe you can call Infinity and say, I'd like the thing. No. The thing model, they're going to be like, I don't understand what you mean. These are all custom firearms that are made to the individual specifications. As an average price point, I'm going to tell you they're going to run you, you know, seven to $8,000. Um, mine as configured, uh, and I had a couple extra mags that I think were included in that price, but I think was wound up in about 7500 Okay. Um, you know, and this is a personal fire. And we've, we've covered this thing at length. You've seen no shortage of content on this, but you can go watch the Infinity full-on review uh, that almost killed us, uh, if you so choose. But uh, all billet components, Infinity is very uh, adamant about this. Like, hey, when it comes to that whole machining side of like quality of components, everything's billet, man. Yeah. Um, and you know, because much like me, you've been in their shop and yep. seen it, and it's pretty damn impressive. The most impressive gun manufacturing shop I've been in thus far. Yeah. It, and it, I've been in impressive. quite a few. Yeah, so. it's impressive. They're making everything uh, there from... Yeah, they're making everything. Everything. There. Um, the the springs that are in that gun. I mean, I've got like 20 recoil springs um, for that gun that are in my case for the gun. Like, you know, it, it, springs, detents, mag release, slide, frame, grips. I, I mean, all of it. They make magazines. They make their own magazines. All of it. Um, it's all hand fit. It's extremely tight tolerances. I will tell you, it's a uh, gun that you're going to have to maintain more than some of them, like the Staccato, for example, 100%. just because the tolerances are at an extreme. Right, they are making very finely tuned precision firearms, and they're going to have to be maintained more. Hey, you go do that 500 round range day, cool, clean your gun. Yep. You know, if your mags, you know, drop in into the dirt and you push the follower, and you're like, it sounds kind of gritty. Cool, take off the base pad, run a brush through it. Like th these are the things that it's a higher level of gun ownership. Mm -hmm. You know, it, and it's like you have to accept that going into it. This also falls in the category of a a rarity and that exclusivity thing. Um, you just, sure. you just don't see them. Yeah. And again, they're all made for you. That serial number is what I told them to put the serial number as all that stuff. Super cool. It's which for that price, it should be that way. Yeah. What you got to keep in mind is most people don't make their own frames, you know? And that's something that I, I mean, again, once you go down the rabbit hole of this, you go, Hey, look, there's a lot of companies. They don't make their own frames. That's fairly uncommon that companies make their own frames. But also as you go up in price. I would expect you to be making your own shit. Yeah. It doesn't always go that way, though. Correct. You know, and it's know. like, yeah, they make everything that's on that gun. And I can tell you that with authority because I've been in the factory a couple times and, and seen it. I've also been there myself. <clears throat> with that freaking said, let's take you to some final thoughts. Okay, some final thoughts. Let's wrap this uh, hour-long video up. So, the entry-level category. My advice to you, if you're looking, start there. Okay? Start there. Which we agree is staccato. I, th I generally, look, I think unless, if, if you say, hey, look, I'm willing to go to 2,500, I'd probably say get a staccato. If you're like, hey, if I can get something that's good that's less than that, I'd say probably get a bull armory. Good Agreed. gun. You know, I, I have no issue with either. I, I, I trust both those guns. I've had good experiences with both. I think it's a good place to start. Here's what one little bit of caution that I would advise you guys on, which is playing the upgrade game. Here's what I mean by that. 
That's staccato, for example. I see people all the time, they go get a $2,500 staccato and they send it off to, um, like I'll say Vulcan Machine Works. And this yeah. is no shade of them. It no. has nothing to do with them. But they'll send it off to Vulcan and Vulcan will do like a, a handful of upgrades. I went on their site recently and I just spec'd out, all right, what would I do to a staccato if I sent it to you? It was like 1300 bucks. So you go, okay, well now I'm at 2500 plus 13. I'm at $3,800. $3, yeah. I would just buy a better gun at that point. That's what I would do. Yeah. Which, what does that get you into the Fowlers? I could buy an Alchemy for that. Alchemy and a Fowler. You know, Fowler, you're getting close. I mean, you're like 500 bucks off, but it's like eh, kind of splitting hairs at that point. Yeah. Um. So it's just like, hey, I would be cautious of the upgrade game. I would just, once you start throwing a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars into a twenty five hundred dollar gun, just get the better gun. Sure. Like you know, it drives kind of drives me nuts to be honest with you. Um. So, uh, mid tier. This is the zone where I would tell you guys you're going to get everything that you need from a practical and functional standpoint at the mid level, which is going to be your Fowler and your Alchemy for the purposes of this video. You got everything you need. There's nothing you're going to be left wanting for. Okay. Yeah. They are functionally checking all your boxes. They're going to shoot better. They're going to be more hand fit, better component, you know, like all, all that. You're going to get a gun that is everything you could ever really need it to be. Yeah. Like that's my two cents on that category. Right. Agreed. Anything beyond that point and what you are likely looking for is options and customization mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of the flex. Thing, sure. Right? That's what you're getting in the high end. Because once you go high end, I, I wrote this down, I, but it, it's kind of gimmicky, but it's also pretty true. But in that high end category, you're getting the kind of firearms that like fathers hand down to sons. Yeah. Like they get passed down. Yeah. Because you're heirloom like, pizza. Yeah, this is my Nighthawk. You know, this is my Infinity. Sure. You know, this is my, there's a company called Heirloom Precision. They don't do double stacks. But like, you know, you're getting guns that like you put in a will. Well, back to the watch thing. Yeah. High-end watches same usually thing. pass down. Yeah. Generation, right? Yep. Same thing. And in that high-end category, look, sky's the limit, man. You, you can go as nuts as you want to go. Because like you can go drop, you know, five to 6,000 on Atlas Nighthawk, and if you go, look, I want to go full sin and pick every single damn thing on that gun. Cool, man. Go get yourself an infinity for yeah. eight grand and, and like, blow people's minds. Yeah. Like, knock yourself out, you know? It's all end user preference at the end of the day. A quick projection is I think that you're going to see a lot more companies getting into this space. Um, it's my, I guess, a little bit of an opinion, but I also think it's probably supported by fact, which is, like, the era of... Gucci Glock and Gucci Polymer guns, done. I believe, is largely done. Done. Not exclusively, but it's faded a lot. I mean, you see companies like Type A getting into 2011s. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It, we have uh, Oracle, right? 2011s. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to see companies like that who are doing this sort of spin on a 2011. Sure. Where it's like, well, let's take a better mag and build a 1911 a style around pistol yeah. around that mag. Um, but you just go, look, I think you're going to see... As soon as people can connect the, the freaking dots that, hey, a, a Gucci Glock that's $2,500 gets you a staccato, just go get a staccato, my friend. Uh, it's, just, it's just a more enjoyable gun, you know? Like, So I think that that's the phase that we're in. You're going to see more and more manufacturers getting into this space, which is a good thing because I think that's going to continue to push the, yeah. the needle, make everyone better, bring more options to the market because the 2011 market is still relatively small. Sure. You know, there's not that many companies that are making $5,000 2011s. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's a pretty small list, you yep. know? And those are three of the big ones right there that we just covered. Yeah. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Chime in if you got any comments. Um, there's a, a, a lot that, you know, you, you may want to know. If, if we can chime in with any answers, um, let us know. And then a final thanks to FOP. Yeah, FOP. Sponsors for the channel, the whole freaking channel. Yes. They are concealed carry insurance. If you find yourself, unfortunately, heaven forbid, in a self-defense scenario and you have FLP as your insurance, whether it's a firearm, a knife, a spoon, a rock, if it's legally justified, they're going to take care of you. Yep. To the point, Jake, if you create a little mess because, you know, blood is a little messy. Just you yeah. know, got it in. They're going to send a dude over to clean it up for you. So there's a couple different plans, individual plan like you have. I have the family plan because it covers my wife and I also travel. So. Yeah. 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 So if you travel, uh, definitely do the mid tier plan. Yep. Um, if you don't travel, then Hey, uh, you know, go basic there, homie. There's a code to 1911 it saves you about a third off of the service. It's a fair amount. Um, is a, is a, it's a good, so, you know, it's going to put it around in the neighborhood of like, I don't know, 20 bucks, you yep. know, depending on the plan. So it's not much and it's good. Um, it's good protection and you know, one of those things, but better to have it, not need it than need it, not have it. Kind Correct. Of, you know? So anyway, check that out. We'll have it linked below. Yep. Chime in, comments, we'll happily answer any questions you got.
We'll see you dudes next time.